cultural ties and economical ties, it is like the urban one, it's not like an old agricultural one. But this also means that cities have been developing and developing a lot. And then the cities have become like the main center of urban living. My father was the first architect of my village in Italy. I'm originally Italian from Bergamo. And my father uh, was lucky enough, enough to be the first one in the village during a time that we call uh, Italian miracle. So he actually built half of the village. And by building half of the village, he also started to realize that, uh, well, we can do houses, like you see in this picture, we can do condos, but actually that's not what makes the things different. I mean, you can have a beautiful house, but if outdoor sucks, it just sucks. And uh, the city, high density environment is not necessarily the most beautiful. So also the promise of living in the city is not necessarily the ult ultimate promise that we can face or we can look to. So you know that, uh, that said, in any case, if we look worldwide, the growth of urban center is staggering. It's crazy. I mean, the movement of people still in the urban centers towards urban centers is incredible. Although cities occupy very little portion of the world surface, it's about 2%, 3% of the emerging land. And uh, we all live in cities, more or less, more or less. And the tendency looks to be keep going in that direction, especially if we follow Western standards. To live in the city, to live as urban, uh, as urbanized elements, you know, have brought not only to the development of the cities, but also have brought to a major impact of our own environment. As I repeat, we live only 2% of the emerged land, but whatever we do influence the entire ecosystem. So this notion of the Anthropocene, so a time when the human activity has come to define the geological era. So it has come to participate in its emission, the entire hydro system, higher system and earth system has come at stake. And uh, I pick up these three books because it, they're quite funny. The one in the middle, it tells us about the fact that due to this condition of our impact on the world, we need to have a specific ethics, which is a correct question. And on the right side, there is like a novel writer, which is John Green, normally doing like, you can see he was best selling from the fault in our, in our stars. People like that just starting to talk about the Anthropocene, which is also very funny, means they're becoming a very popular notion. And on the left, because we have got this very famous photographer, Edward Burtinsky, which started to portray also those landscapes where we don't live, but they are evilly impacted by the human beings. And then the proportion of those spaces can be also incredibly big, can be also incredibly huge. Indeed, the landscape as such, it is the construct of nature, a human activity. And if we look the world from the perspective of landscape, we might say that today there is no place on earth which is not a landscape, which is not in some ways defined, designed, impacted by the man. So we got these two things. One, we just gonna, we just like to live in the cities, so to say, if we follow Western standards. And the second, we impact very much on the environment. So everywhere we got this strong, strong impact. As you know, that's not sustainable. That's not very sustainable. And uh, long time people are starting to, uh, since long time ago, people are talking like, is there any chance we go against the tide? Is there any chance we can sub, say, you know, reverse what we are doing? 
is there any alternative to these dynamics? And there are some alternatives which are design or ideas and some alternative which maybe just happen without a intentionality. So we had some designers in the 70s, like, uh, oops, let me, this is a Japanese, uh, what is the name of him? Uh, I got a problem of memory recently, uh, terrible. Anyway, uh, what's that? Kenzo Tenji. No, 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 that's not Tange. Okay. Uh, that this is um, metabolism. Yeah, he's one metabolist. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, there is like um, among the metabolist architects, some of them we were thinking about agricultural cities. And one very famous proposed they want the model you see, which is like uh, a vision for a city uh, participating in the infrastructure of the landscape. And uh, unfortunately, those visions of the 70s, uh, they showcased, as I write, some aesthetic potential, but they did not really drive the development. And the division between the nature and cities and the unsustainable uh, pattern of development has continued up to the moment in which we are living now. Anyhow, if we look to Asia, there are very specific and strange settlements, what they call Asian mixed urban rural areas. And these are quite real and they offer to the eyes of the geographer that are looking to them, the reality of an interplay between human and natural dynamics that seems to be more flexible than any urban center or Western suburb. So these are not the product of intentional development, but there is something special in them. There is a mix of nature, infrastructure, and uh, uh, artificial uh, constructions, which are more flexible, more sustainable, so to say. And there's a very special thing. Anyhow, they are not intentional. That's the most interesting thing. So they look like this. You see that you got, do you see my pointer? Yes, I be, do you see my pointer on screen? Okay. Um, there is like huge fields. Most of the time is wet area field. So paddy field, rice or similar. They've got very regular system of, inter, of infrastructure, mostly the result of colonial times. And they have uh, diffuse settlements, people living a little bit of everywhere and also factories a little bit of everywhere. So in these systems, we have got maybe an overabundance of simple infrastructure, but in the same time, we have a very simple and easy mixture of agricultural production, social systems, industrial production, and then also uh, cultural systems. Uh, if you take the case of the island of Taiwan, you have the highest concentrations of the highest diffusion of religious sites in the world. There are more than 22,000 uh, little temples across the island. Indeed, if we move down, if we move down from the sky, what we see in the Zakote is this one. There's paddy fields in front of you. Maybe there is a temple, there is housing, there are factories, there is infrastructure, in this case, of high quality. In this, where this picture was taken, is my picture. Actually, this factory, it is for the production of semiconductor. So you see, it's also not just like basic factories, but it's high tech. And some people, some geographers started to study this area and to see, oh, this maybe they represent an alternative to the Western urbanization where we have got people just going to the city, rural area being abandoned or being left to different kinds of developments, the divide getting bigger and unsustainable. This guy is called Tari McGee, he's a Canadian uh, geographer. 
He has a controversial uh, uh, notion, which is the one of Desakota. Desakota means in Indonesian city village. And he says that this is like a map depicting an hypothetical urban mega region, which can be like the size, I don't know, of Pianura Padana for, for you living in Italy, or much larger size, in which we have got major cities in these big circles. And then we have got communication ways, secondary cities, but in between those cities, we have the Desakota. And these people in the Desakota, they are not living, commuting to the city center. They are living, producing, and consuming on site. But in the same time, they're also connected to the big cities, and then they are connected to the chance of exporting what they do. Why the work of this geographer is important and what was his concern? I read what is written here. The Zakota is a term used in urban geography, Terry McGee developed, to describe the areas in these extended surroundings of large cities in which urban and agricultural land use and settlement coexist and are e intensively connected. Unfortunately, and that's the reason why I was researching, the local administration may disregard this, may don't consider that we got these kind of settlements, these kind of conditions, and maybe they deny their development or give them low restrictions. And this potential that they have for sustainability is therefore under threat due to development of urban primacy, so the preference of people moving to the city, but also the adoption of Western planning model. In Western planning system, normally we tend to divide very clearly what is urban and what is rural areas, applying different planning systems and different regulation to the two. So if we use this Western system in the Desakota areas, in the end, we are going to push for them to disappear. And remind that, as I told you, that these areas, they are not intentionally built. So there is also a lack of awareness of the people to live in certain con in such a condition. So we led to geographer this kind of uh, thinking and this kind of problem, the one of making the people or the administration aware, but we also have the problem to make the people and the life of the people more connected, also spiritually, also I would say, yes, from the spirit to the place, to discover an identity of this kind of place. So the question is that this Desakota needs an architecture of its own, needs some kind of public space which is adequate for the Desakota. Public space which is adequate for these areas, which is not urban, not rural, squares, a promenade, not only like road and infrastructure, and we say this because the more people become aware of their living condition, normally, the more the public space develop. If you think to history of the city, that's the same. First, we have informal cities and then the informal cities, they get improved in terms of public space. And then we finally have a city. So this is a quote is the same. If we are able to understand that it has a power and discover also kind of architecture, some specific space for it, it will be a contribution to this uh, settlement model. And maybe we will have the chance to push for keeping this model and be sure that this model contribute to global sustainability. So this is Taiwan. This is the result of a research that I did by GIS and the green the squares they show they show those areas that are close both from rural and urban land use. So you see below 0, 70 or 100 percent of space within 200 meters from both a rural and an urban land plot. Here there is the main city, it is Taipei. Taipei, you see, of course, is gray because there's just urban land. But if you look outside, mostly everywhere, you got this intensity of green, which means that mostly everywhere, 
everyone is living within 200 meters of agricultural production and some urban function, which is a unique stuff. Plus, you see there is like an highway system. There is the pink line, which cross the overall space. This big gray area in the center is actually high mountain, so there is no uh, uh, urbanization there. If you look this image, it means that the overall island of Taiwan is just like a huge linear city of the Zakota kind. Plus, there is a little island, a little bit detached, which is Ilan. Later, we are going to talk of this place called Ilan, that in any case, it is of this the Zakota kind. Since 1997, you see, uh, the government is promoting the improvement of the urban environment in Taiwan. Why? Because until 1997, there was not really a culture of public space in Taiwan. But this is common in most of the Asian um, uh, countries in most of the Asian places. Until recently, there has been no cultural public space. The cities were a simple accumulation of um, inhabited spaces. It's a, it's a matter of culture, it's a matter of development. If you think of Japan also, um, the culture is so that there is no uh, idea of public space as such to the point that the, there is no address system based on the roads, the roads that don't exist in Japan, only the neighborhoods, and then the blocks inside the neighborhoods got like a name. Recently, the last 20 years, there's been developments, and Taiwan, it is uh, one place at the forefront. They started to subsidize uh, program projects to improve the public space within and without cities. But the point is that mostly within the Zakota, since everywhere is the Zakota. You see also recently, we have a very good development of landscape architecture. This is a very recent landscape architecture project called Dark Line, which has won many international awards. And it is again in a Zakota condition. It is the refurbishment of a former railroad for pedestrian purposes to connect some neighborhoods. Then um, this is the abstract I gave of my lecture. I will not read through it completely. Completely, I hope maybe uh, the students or whoever is the public have, have uh, has read it already. Uh, I say that after being here for some time and doing some research, I found that there is some people, a group of architects, which have got a very specific freestyle, which is a system of design that, so to say, it is very similar to the way uh, the Zakota is organized and very sweet the intervention within the Zakota. First of all, because this freestyle elaborates on um, landscape features to build the identity and continuity of public space in these Zakota areas, first. And second, because this design style system, uh, the artifacts are mostly deconstructed into loose assemblage of things which are then compacted together. So it's just like uh, the Zakot is a mixture of many things put together. And indeed, then all this maelstrom, all this mix is kept together by diffuse connectivity. So the topic of connectivity and improving the quality of connectivity is crucial. And the landmarks within the system are mostly landscape-like. Due to this, is also very similar to landscape urbanism, although it is not landscape urbanism as such. And uh, my point of view is that due to this, uh, through the Zakota freestyle, through the Zakota freestyle, the Zakota as a landscape urban form, it is almost a political statement. That means that people are becoming slowly aware that this is a very special way of living. And that this political statement, so to say, 
culminate is the top of a peculiar but not necessarily intentional history of social natural development. So the fact that the people here, but not only in Taiwan, are living like this is not intentional, but there is some quality. And the development of this design style and improvement of public space within this system in a coherent form is a very strong uh, contribution to the development of local identity. And that's why I say it's also a political statement. I will not go through uh, the detail of that. I show you uh, some images. This is a work from the architect I'm going to talk the most, early work. As you see, this is like a, a community center. It's the patchwork also. There is some kind of units. There is green everywhere. It connect with the public space. Uh, a little bit strange, a little bit a mixture. It a little bit resembled the aerial view that we had of, uh, I showed you before. That's another project more recently. You see that here he built the same market, the big pergola, and also he built the landscape, improved the quality of the landscape. Before the landscape was informal, that with this pergola has become a public space. Under it, there is also an additional of other stuff. Again, it's a mixture. It's a pergola, it's a museum, it's a public space, it's a park, there's everything together. There's also river, water. That's another key project. Another key project at the outskirts, a former um, shelter for kamikaze airplane during the Second World War has been converted into a museum and community center at periphery. So the shelter, which is here, has been, you see, added with this kind of structure. A little bit make a memorial, a little bit add to make a courtyard to have activity and connect also with the landscape design, the surrounding, which is mostly agricultural. So this is like a community center, little museum, memorial, public space in the middle of the fields. For me personally, when I saw these three projects, I started to see that, oh, there's something special and I want to study and research it. And I found, and I made a book out of this research. This book tells the story of this guy, which is the architect that mostly did this kind of work in Ilan. His name is Seng Yang Wang. I'm not going to talk about the history of his. I'm not going to talk about uh, what he, uh, the way he developed his own, uh, his own uh, approach. I'm going to show you some recent works, which are more in the countryside area, more in the outskirts of the city. They are more con like contribution to this Dezakota lifestyle. Uh, indeed, you see a map of uh, um, this Ilan. Here you see again the map of Taiwan in small in the corner. You see the highways. You see that I'm focusing that part I told you before isolated. In this point, you see the position of the office. I've been moving through the years, but more or less in the same area of Ilan. This radius. It is a radius of a 30 minutes driving distance and the dots, the, the violet dots and the green things are the project that this guy been doing. The guy decided I'm going to work only in this place where I can reach the place within 30 minutes of driving so I can control the quality of the work, but I also know very well the conditions. I'm not going to look projects outside. In the beginning of his career, maybe he had been focused more in the most urban part through a series of projects. So this central part, Ilan, is actually in this map. And uh, also he had been very persistent. So actually, as you see, there is like a corridor of, of intervention, but it is a result of one to 23 different projects through years. I'm not going to talk the way he picked up the projects. He's not a mafia guy. Uh, partially, he got the project through winning competition. Partially, he got the project by convincing local private people to donate the land. Partially, was part of a political movement locally, so the people also supported. Partially, was going to ask money to the government to complete project that he, he set up. 
Anyway, the key is that field office, the place you stay and the place you work, is within 30 minutes driving distance, so 15 kilometers for every project. And this area is mostly the Tezacota. It is exactly the area I show you in the aerial pictures, in the aerial picture that I show first. The very special things that he had in mind since 2000, he opened the office in 1994 to 1996. And uh, since the beginning, which means the 2000, uh, when he was proposing or participating to competition bids, he started to have the idea that whatever kind of design you do, even a small project, should be put in a context in which it connects to the landscape at the large scale. The special thing of Taiwan is that when you do a competition, you don't deliver boards, you deliver reports like this. A4 reports. This is because, because the planning and design system of Taiwan is based on the American system, and the American system is based on planning more than design. And due to this tradition, you have the chance to provide design, but you also have the chance to provide planning suggestions. And you also have the chance to write and to explain. So when he was doing some project in Ilan, he was starting to say, oh, why we do this Ilan corridor? Maybe we connect to the river. And if we connect to the river, then later we need to think that we need maybe to design later on something at the end of the river. So the river can become a public space. This is in 2000. This is in 2000. There were just like short vision to give to the government together with his proposal for the project. And then if we look now, 2023, those green lines, those edgy stuff, those things are all things that he had the chance to develop and implement through time, or it is now trying to plan. We are counting, I think, more than 100 projects totally. If we, if we pick up the single projects all over the plane, I will focus and I will show you projects from two main areas. One, it is this Zhongwei area, which is the dune area facing the Pacific Ocean. And later, I will show you the area in between Zhongwei and the city of Ilan, which is here where they mark this kind of green corridor more strongly. For example, in this area, he had the chance to build a pump station. A dune museum actually was like a stop station for the uh, highway, for not really highway, to the speedway that he was able to turn into a, a museum. And then uh, some smaller intervention, bus shelter, community basketball court, a tree park uh, close to the river. That one he promised 20 years before came to really build the, at the end of the, the river. Then the public lavatory, then a campus that is gonna come, then a, 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 a strategy, a technique to develop the landscape close to the incineration plan. And finally, together with the single project, some more general planning. Here you see the area of the Dune Museum and for example, the temple bus shelter is somewhere here and the other, so, and then they are proposing also this kind of landscape plan. Here you see the pump station. The pump station is a real pump station for the water, because as I said to you, we have got a lot of paddy fields, so the water has to control. But this was the chance also to build public space, to improve mobility, to transform off the pump into a spectacle. There is like a big roof made as a mirror so people can see the water being pumped. This is the Dune Museum. This is a picture taken by my wife. And then you see that the Dune is the museum is really in the middle of nature. And it also connects with the topography. You see the section is like a sketch section in preliminary it was the idea that there is a system of dune protecting from the waves of the ocean, natural system already in place. And to build a museum in that shape, part of the landscape would have been also a thing for the people to acknowledge the importance of the dune, but also a way to make the dune more resistant by the foundation of the museum. Here you see the top of the museum, which is actually is landscape and connect to the dune, here the dunes. 
In the dunes, along the dunes, there is also some small shelters, which are observatory, and the, and the roof of the museum also got this kind of observatory, very similar. Here you see the view from Google Earth, and you see the dune here, the museum, and the way it is actually connect with the design of the landscape. And the landscape plan they are developing is not only including the parking, but also the rest of the area going down. A way to work, which is crucial, it is that in field office for this architect to increase the control of the connection between buildings and the surrounding, and also to explain to the people clearly, they seldom use drawing, they mostly use models, models of very large scale in which it's possible to clearly see architecture and the way architecture connect with the landscape. They first do the models and then out of the models they develop technical drawings. And by the models, they are also able to talk to the people and to let them clearly understand and get some awareness of this specific living condition. Here you see, this is a, one of the first iterations of the museum. So you see the museum, the way it connects with the dunes, there's some extension, the parking is here. There was some ideas that not built, some other ideas not built. This is another project which could not be built. You will see from another perspective the same, but you see also that then the design of the museum actually fused into the landscape and the overall landscape become uh, a model. Then your team will talk a little bit the way they were. He been working inside the field office, so you can tell like by this way of doing, the project never stop to the architecture but it always goes through the model to the surrounding and it expand, it expand because like, as soon as you start to draw to add model, you also start to think, how can you arrange it better? Here you see that now they are also building the road, the winding road, going to the museum on the other part and also the agricultural areas start to be connected to these developments to preserve. Here you see along this area, the basketball court they built, uh, also making sh a shelter for the people. So it's not just a basketball court, but it's also a little public space. The same for the bus shelter close to the temple. There's a temple here. As I told you, like there's also this diffusion of religious site, cultural sites, and that's also important that public space connect to them. That's the famous promenade public space at the end of the river that he promised 20 years before. And it was a way also to protect the trees. They were like banyan trees that were growing there. And by this public space design, they're being protected. Otherwise, maybe someone come and does destroy everything. This is the public lavatory. Uh, there is also a lot of imagination how the landscape can become part of some basic activities as you see that the lavatory is along the the dam the dike and if you go to pee like you see here you pee by and you look the river uh, which is a funny thing but actually it makes a lot of sense because you are not in a in an enclosed environment by the simple art maybe you stop the car you need a toilet it's along the road and you stop and you've got a, a relationship to the landscape mm -hmm. you get awareness and you really respect the fact that many people actually they're moving into the landscape so they need this kind of facilities a little bit everywhere that the landscape strategy close to the incineration plant you see the tower of the incineration they built a shelter to treat the flying ashes but also they make a plan that this shelter it is where they are treated, but then it also becomes a system later on to create like a park. So the ashes, the package, and they are put in a kind of uh, waste treatment underground. And then the waste treatment underground is actually become a very huge dune system that continue the dune along the sea. We are going to look at another area, the more in the center. Here you see again this the Zakota, and you see a former airport for the kamikaze, as I told you, and field office, the design office actually uh, here. No, sorry, uh, here. This yeah, one. Yeah, this one is the field office, and um, 
Mr. Wang was able to convince the university chief of this area, this area got one, one very big technical university, to don't build the second university in the city center, but to build the extension of the university in the outskirts inside of this Desakota, and not to have like a big tower building, but you see in this plan, to use the former airport field as a place where to put many small one story or two story structure so to create a, a campus that can also be connected with the moving lines outside so the people can actually cross the campus and participate in the life of the campus and the campus life will be at the same scale of the small houses all around and the agricultural production this is partially now built you see for example one of the university facilities the living and the experience is very special. You see, it just you live, you feel like a little bit like underground. You feel a little bit inside of the ground, and it's very similar to the river um, landscape that is in the site. Some things are now under construction. Some things are under design right now. Uh, one particularity of the approach of Mr. Wang is that although. Uh, his views are very long, long-term views, and projects are very big visions. They're always happening in small spots, and uh, no matter if they are built later on or not. But while he proposed one single building built, he's already thinking that maybe later on there is the extension. And this creates a vision that creates in the governments, in the government awareness, of the system of development is contributing to this Desakota identity. You see, these are other of these uh, part of the campus under development. It is a campus in Desakota. They are also doing things of a smaller scale now. They are trying to address the dikes, the dams of the water system. All the water system was controlled by the Japanese colonialism during Japanese colonial time to provide water to the rice fields. But this means there are a lot of dikes and a lot of uh, infrastructure movement connected to the dikes. And it's not necessarily public space. It's just like mobility. And right now, field office is starting to think that all these need improvement as public space. So they are having plan, for example, for this uh, piece of the canal to have improvement and then become a promenade and to add like a bridge to make the passage from one side to the another like an experience. And you see they're already starting to design something like this. So it become an experience for people to walk really in the fields. It's not just like uh, walking this way, like once it was along the infrastructure, but becoming something more solid, like this kind of like bridge and more beautiful and in which you can really experience the specialty of the landscape with these subtle differences of height. Another part, more crazy, more fancy, something that they call water park is actually a, a place where the mountain touch the plane. Uh, nothing to show special. It is now under design. I just want to show you it because it's a bit fancy and it's a bit like recent. See, same system, originally only this area, and then it become a large model and start to think about everything. See, it grows. And the large model, it is landscape, but also incorporates some public space. Part of the landscape become a canopy to host large events. Then there is maybe other than observatory to look at the landscape. And this, it was in this area. And then the other we saw it was in this area. So right now, and the, the, the river system I was showing to you that is now they're projecting is this one, but they also think about the other. The, the university, it was here, it is here. So you see, it is the entire plain of Ilan, which is called Lanyang Plain. You can feel through this intervention as a kind of real urban, rural and urban system in the making. The Japanese metabolists, they had maybe the dream, but they never achieved to do something real. Maybe it was too strong. And also the perspective of time over development was too clear. 
uh, the way of development that Mr. Wang was able to set in place, the way he was able to hijack time made this possible, the persistence and the way also people start to understand and Yao Ting also, like the others, to participate. Field office is a big group of people right now. It's not only Mr. Wang, it's 30 people more or less. Yeah. And many of them, they also become academic like, like him. So they also start to, to talk to make clear the ideas, not only practice. Now, my question is, and then I'm going to finish. Is it possible to do this if you are not singing one? And I tell you, yes, because uh, as I told you, I'm also practitioners and we have been trying with my colleagues. I, I have Taiwanese colleagues. They are my family. I become very close to them. Nine years I'm living in Taiwan. We also try to follow some similar steps because we believe in the power of public space. We were not able to address so the Zakota areas, but we were able to, to do something. We started from different point of view, and we also trying to do something a little different. Oh, sorry. There was a change. It was not. Thank you for listening there. We have been, uh, our office was able to organize in 2016, the first white night of uh, Asia with the support of the French government. And we organized the white night as a linear promenade, long two kilometers and a half, in which people can rediscover the city, Taipei city. But this also has made it possible for us to reconnect with the idea of connectivity. And after that, we organized the event to, to talk to government that we also believe public space must be improved, especially if we want to have uh, this kind of developments. And later on for another city, we've been able to improve one former area at the edge of the arbor. This is Kilong, and it was like an area full of superfetation occupied, cannot open. We were able to clean it up to become a park, but we have been also able to connect it with another area on the other side here, where it was very, where it, there was a French cemetery and also part of heritage. So we start to create a little small public system, which also connect with the nature on the back. There's a mountain on the back. And actually we have been proposing it's the same as Mr. Wang did to the government. This is the place where we did the two squares that you have been seeing. A connection with the mountain, with a loop, to go to the top and to do some small intervention to build some stairs, some little bridge, some little public space, so that this simple public space could connect to the top of the mountain where there is another piece of heritage. It's a former fort from the Qing dynasty, and then people could experience the heritage, nature, and city all together, a little bit like this mix of the Zakota experience. Plus, through our experience, we started to suggest that it is not only a matter of public space development, but it is two tracks of development. You see on top, we propose to study and develop the space but also we propose to study and think about activities like to open an open air museum of the place that they can run not only a building, but the entire system of movement, like the path. So people walk open air, walk in the city, and this is part of the, of the museum and part of the public space. And to bring these two developments together, this is a, as a planning proposal we deposit in 2022, then there has been like a change of uh, a political party, a power. But as Mr. Wang used to say, uh, wait, and maybe also the government understand, and then we will go back to do this kind of project. So that's my part is finished. Now I let Yao Ting to make his presentation. So how many minutes? Are Don't worry, you I think you go, you go. I because we start here. Yeah, yeah. Do you see the presentation? Yeah. Hello, everyone from the Public Milano, and I'm Yao Ting Wu, and I'm teaching in Shijian University 
And in 2009 to 2014, I was working in field office for, for like 5.5 years. And so thanks for the ads and to invite me to give, give, give uh, you some personal experience about what they do. And I think also I can start from this uh, image from the NASA in 2015. You see in, in the light, in the nighttime, you can see a little bit how the urbanize, urbanization goes on under this, uh, like uh, China, Taiwan, or South Korea and Japan. And so we are going to focus, um, uh, zoom in a little bit about Taiwan. Yeah, thank you. You see this uh, triangle is the Yilan. So compared to the west side, Basically, S size almost nothing. So all the uh, uh, cities and uh, industrial and economies based on of uh, concentrate on the on the waste. So when we moving to to see this Ilan city, it, uh, actually in like uh, thirty years ago, the Ilan government, Ilan people, they realized because there's a mountain in the between of the Ilan and Taipei, so they can somehow stop the urbanization in Ilan, but they will have a tunnel, it's like highway to link Ilan and Taipei. So they are starting to worry about how can then survival from this um, urbanization and try to not be the second city or like a satellite city of Taipei. So this is the uh, Yilan, the, the image of Yilan, I think is taken from 20 years ago, but nowadays more or less like this. And so I will, I uh, so for the topic, I will um, introduce uh, six lessons. And the first lesson I would like to uh, introduce the so-called Yilan experience. What is Yilan experience? So you see this, the environment is like a plain and raised under the high mountain and everything is like quite nature. And also for the, for the plain, you see there's a, a lot of a field rice and the water fields. And also please pay attention on the, on the right side. There's a mountain, uh, sorry, it's an island. We call the Turtle Island. It's a, it's somehow it's like a um, um, spiritual and monumental image or landscape for the Ilan people. So you see this image is very close to, it responds to the, the idea of, it, of uh, the Sakota. Yeah, so, but let's look about other city. It's full of the density and out of control mm -hmm. and uh, it's, Everything is like a disaster without any uh, any good planning. So in that time, Ilan people and Ilan government, they are very worried about if in the future, after the connection of the highway, Ilan is very, uh, is very possible to become in this situation. So they, they want to give some movement to stop this or avoid this. Okay, so they have a song, they, they try to um, combine some, uh, I will say like two, two different parts. One is the government itself. Another part is like an architectural prof professional, maybe from academic or also from office. They want to uh, reveal what is the resource of the Ilan itself, and they find there's some uh, water water space or open space or like a suburban space. So they want to do some tiny thing to make them become more public and more um, more how to say um, not so urbanized. Then, so for example, this is the. Um, Ilan, Ilan County government, they invite the uh, uh, Japanese team zoo uh, from Japan come to Ilan, came to Ilan to, to, de to design this a little bit of uh, vernacular style for, for Ilan and establish a model for the, for the less 
30 years for, for, for us um, Taiwanese architects. The three ones is a possibility not become the modern city, but become the more like the Dakota or uh, looking for the vernacular lifestyle. And so this, this movement was invites many architects, not only in Iran, also all of Iran. For example, actually, uh, when field office was established in Iran was in 1994, but actually Hong Sun is born in Taipei and he edu educated in Taichung and Yale, Yale uh, University in America. But he, he wanted to do something all of the capital and all of the Taipei. So he decided to go to Iran and join that movement. And so you can see there are some public facilities such as museum and like a water park in the Dongshan River and some landscape or natural park around the Ilan. So this was the Ilan experience and what's the core value? I think there's a four points. They want to set a new standard for the public works and especially create a high quality and professionalism. And try, they also try to establish a new aesthetic, aesthetic, and it's more close to the uh, vernacular um, idea. And the third is they want to make a new uh, urban planning and urban and new new programming. So this is, and also they are searching for the identity because this is the one thing they want to keep away from the urbanization such as Taipei or New Taipei. So they want to find the identity for themselves, for the culture, for the, for the uh, uh, urban or for the public space. And so there's a three steps a strategy from to making the Iran experience. And the first one is, I think it's, it's very interesting because this is not a top down uh, plan. Actually, they are from the small scale project to the to the larger project because if they do, do the larger planning first, it's like a gambling. And because there are no uh, previous example in, in Taiwan. So actually this is a very uh, experimental thinking to push the, this Elan experience. So the first strategy is they have to do something small first, then when to test it, and if it uh, succeeds, they can continue to the larger scale. If not, they can fix it. And the second strategy, they have to invite different uh, good architects or planners from, from other city, even from Japan. And the third, they want to promote the community development and create a citizen they care. So this is the this is the background. I would like to uh, address a little bit to let you know why there's some architects to re to build this environment because I think the government is is the is a is a key key points because they have a awareness to do this, and so this uh this a uh, photo of the how. Uh, field office work in the office. You can see they do. They are like a thirty percent. They work together in a in an old factory in Ilan. They use the model and invite many um, professional person and the old or government or local people or neighborhood. They come together and everyone have a right to say they want to say or they they want to care about. So they can exchange a lot of idea and to find the new possibility of the Elan. And so the, the lesson two is about what is the challenge of Elan? Okay, because we are talking about how successful of the Elan, but actually in the dark side of the moon, actually you can see this, um, the text from the, from the central, so they will. You need to explain a little bit on okay. Chinese. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is the the text from the from the central government, 
and they will divide from like like a ninety four percentage taxation. And, you yes, yes, taxation yeah. money. And uh, they will divide like sixty percent to the major city. We have a uh, six major city in Taiwan, so they can share like a ten percent for each. But other twelve or thirteen city, they only have to share the left the twenty four. So which and and Elon is big below this 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 level. So this for this image you can show actually the challenge is Elon they got a very very low budget from the center so which means they have to survival of this problem wait one second yeah this is what i meant that the government does not yet acknowledge that most of the people or taiwan work as a very big city in the zakota style mm -hmm. because most of the money is still thinking to go in small spots and not in the large area yeah and the second challenge is not only in, in Iran, actually the most, oh, I'm a Taiwanese, so, so I have a right to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, most of the Taiwanese, they, they think, they're thinking everything in very tiny scale. For example, if they want to build a building, they only think about the uh, factor, factor, uh, fa factors of possibility inside the border of the site. So I think this is a, it's very difficult to talk with the government, I mean, over the all in, in Taiwan or the the, the crime. If you want have if you want to do something beyond the normal or beyond the previous example. Yeah. So this is actually is a very huge challenge to the to the architecture from around the Taiwan. So Let's come to the lesson three. So how we think in field office. For example, if um, from the previous lesson, we know we have a very low project. So we cannot do uh, one, sometimes we cannot finish one project in one time. So we have to divide the project in many steps, in many time. And but by doing so, I think we, can, we, we have an idea that even uh, since we cannot finish the project or design one time, we have to do that for many times. So why can we um, break the border of the project itself? Why can we? Why can we not uh, think about the extension and the new future for the for the this uh, this land? So you see, in this area, it's it's, it's like a four projects. And this start from the uh, government building and try to link the the river bridge. So you see, this is a bridge, and what field office do is they make a second layer, and to hanging on the old bridge to give a, to create a the passage for the for the people. Oh, so this is the um, government building is set on the the number one, so they. They create these different projects and link it by many years. And we we use this pattern to think broadly. So the the this map H in is in this area. So you you, you, you can see they extend this this uh, idea to the whole election. and also they use the and idea in the another city next to it so you see this uh, huge cultural center actually is sit down in this this place and connect by the public space and park or sports and they try to link everything in together to create a continue and give the the human right to the, the to because they can Working on this, on um, only driving or use other other expensive way. So how we practice in field of office? So you can see this is the uh, side model of the Elan, and I think I remember like they yeah. need they need one technical break. Okay, no problem. Sarah, you need the technical break, right? You hear me? 
now? Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. It works now. <laughs> sorry. Continue. So sorry. Yeah. It's perfect. It's perfect. There is no noise. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So you see, this is a psi model. One to the scale is four hundred. You see, this is the the psi model of the Ilan city. So we can make a, a comparison. It do you, do you see this? Um, this uh, circle and the and the river and the river is exactly the this circle and the river, and this office they actually they start from the tiny and but public architecture first, but like they want to give a, a urban view of the this city, so they build the, the this kind of a, a site urban model by themselves. And so they, they stop by the piece to piece. And if they have a new competition, if they have a new idea, they can change some, some, of, some of them. So actually in their mind, they do architecture, but in a larger uh, idea of the city and the urban and the environment. And so this is, this is my in, in 10 years ago. So every time we do the model, we own we sometimes we can bring the model to the site because Professor um, knows he he very enjoying to thinking and communicate communicating with the staff like us on site because on site we have uh, many information and we can discuss we can discover we can apply to to the to the design. So this is a project I working on before. It's a cemetery facility on the high mountain. It's like 70, seven, uh, 750 meters from the sea level. And this and the other project I working for, and you see I'm working in the model. And sometimes when the under construction will still move, shift the model from the office to the site, to make the adjustment and and give some new try of the design. So this is not very clear boundary between the design, working drawing, and construction. Every, everything they are a little bit uh, overlapping, and we all never uh, think, uh, we never uh, give up the opportunity to make things good and right. So. The lesson five is the model. I think the model is not only the, the tool for create design, but also is a tool for communication with other technique and for the crime, for the for the uh, normal people. And, and I know this is a little bit cliche that model is like an important tool for the design, but in 20 years ago when I have training in, in my bachelor, if you do the model with the green, which means you lack the sense of design. But in few apps, it gave me a very strong impact that, wow, I think this model could be in green. But why? Because uh, Huang Sengyuan, he know that model is not only for, for find the aesthetic. He also, he also have a very powerful, he's, he's also a very powerful tool for communicate with uh, people not all of the professional. So the model in the field of is be sometimes being very real and it will be very colorful because they, the, the important mission in one is that we have to communicate with all people. So, and the last lesson, I want to give a very brief, uh, brief ending because I told and I told you that uh, we have a uh, some challenge like we have a very low budget and people are think very very tiny and we don't have uh, any in, uh, broad uh, imagination of the future. So I think the most interesting thing is field office they always do they always do a label or place to give people a new perspective to look back at our hometown. 
For example, this is the cemetery facility. Facility in this place, you can see the mountain, you can see the plain, you can see the ocean, you can see the the uh, the the how to say the life in the Yilan. So when people come to here to for the for the um, for the ritual, but they still have an opportunity to look back the hometown and give the sense of the the city and also think about the imagination of the future. So you see this the 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 project on the high mountain, and this one thing that something new is that uh, in the beginning in the in the previous um, era we used the uh, we put uh, how to say we put uh, we don't we have uh, we borrow the dead body on the on the underground but since Taiwan we lost a lot of uh, uh, the, uh, because the development of the urbanization we have a few and few land so we have to build a, like a, a cemetery but in the vert vertical way but in this high mountain few always field office, they want to, at one hand, keep the density, but also they want to keep the horizontal experience and on the high mountain to avoid too many tall tower, vertical building to destroy the, this mountain. And by doing so, you can see this is the cemetery in the high density, but also keep in horizontal development. And also the roof, become a very important artificial landscape. You see the under this top roof, you can see the, it's like a, you, you have a view and to see that this surrounding include the alien plan, the ocean and the turtle, turtle island. So I think on the one hand, we, we want to create something out of the traditional and all of the cliche, and we want to in, uh, we want to recall some imagination for the people. And what we do is we create the we create a physical um, place to give them a right and opportunity to see in the different level. So I think this sixth lesson is I want to introduce and correspond to Alex and and to you. And thank you. Sarah. I I I want because uh, your team made um, very clear a few points, especially on the model, uh, uh, the way they use model, the way they do model. I would add something that may be useful for your design studio before that we pass to the question. And um, I believe that the reason why once in your end do model, it does not, is not, it is not related to this. Uh, if we work at the boundary between uh, urban and rural areas, where the ratio of the environmental elements or natural elements and the built elements it's 50-50, so to say. A model is the only way to work because it is very difficult to perceive natural elements in drawings. Like uh, how do you go under the trees? How do you... It's very almost impossible. Also, you do render 3D model. You put trees, it's so difficult to feel that uh, you need to have a model. And um, especially if you want to play model and architecture together. If you have only nature, well, you have some standards, you can follow certain abstraction to work. If you have got only architecture, it's very easy to abstract and to use only drawing 3D. But when you work at the meeting between the two, and the two the same quality and uh, the same amount and the same, com and the same complexity, because topography and land nature is much more complex than normal architecture, the model is the only way to approach the design. So that's why I also, I think you, with your student work in uh, this kind of environment, I strongly recommend uh, to use uh, the model as the main way to, and to communicate between.
completely agree with you with the suggestion and it was my first question <laughs> I, I, I would like uh, to ask you uh, when uh, how do you use uh, this type of tools uh, the, mo the maquette the model during the project phases because uh, in Italy in my experience at office in several offices we abandon the use of uh, model and maquette and also in the university. But I remember uh, during my first experience uh, in practice uh, and also in the university, the maquette was fundamental to understand uh, uh, the texture of uh, landscape, uh, the space of uh, landscape and the scale of, uh, of the interventions. I think, I think yeah, okay. I think I have to address one thing is how we work with Sengyuan. Because as, as I know in Taiwan, many architecture office, the, the process is like this. Okay, the architect or the boss, they draw the sketch and the other step, they have to follow up the idea and make a design. But in field office, actually, we are work, what we work together is like a school. So Sen Yong Huang, they don't do the, he, he don't do the, any design. He just give you some idea and maybe just talk to you. And every year, every, every week, we have to uh, have uh, some discussion with him. But he is like, the, really, the work we do is like in the school. So every, every week, we have a design studio. We do the process, we do the design by the staff. Then we talk to, to Sen Yong Huang. And Sen Huang is a little bit like a, like a tutor in the office. So I think it's quite interesting because every, in the, every, I mean, everyone in the office, we have a, our speed uh, because we do the design by ourselves. And the model is very important because model is and, uh, as I say, it's a very good tool for communicate in uh, the in uh, the office. And sometimes we will shift uh, shift the job. So for example, today I do this project, but maybe tomorrow I will shift to Alex. But the model is like an open data. We know very clear about what the previous stair they do or what they try. So the so the model in this in this situation is become a very uh, useful for even for the architects and the staff, they can communicate very well. And for example, and then in, so I will say in the office, we do the model from the very beginning. And if you want to talk to the architect, Huang Senyuan, if you only show the drawing and he will deny it because he want to know more information about the about the site and about the space not only by the drawing but also by the model although he's a very good guy he's a guy with a, a can draw many good drawing yeah and i think that that's and that's one thing so as alex said we we do the model first and then we do the we do the drawing later and but in the some we will compare, we use this different tool at the same time to see the different issue and want and try to make them correspondent to each other. And sometimes we, we will print the drawing on the model because all, all, of, of course the drawing they have some, some important information is that model can, can tell. So we will put, print out the drawing on the model to overlay this different layer of uh, information. Yeah, this will find it decent. Uh, so next you... next year we will uh, start to, to use uh, the maquette in the studio. <laughs> but uh, I want to show you uh, one thing because the, the model you saw before, they are uh, the working model. Maybe this one is a good image. Let me see. One the beautiful models with a lot of colors. They are working models. I mean, if you go closer, they are a crap. 
Yeah. I mean, they, they, <laughs> they, this is the, the actual office, no? So you see this model, this is the actual model they are working on. And wow. they can they add, they, yeah. they change, they put the trees, take away the trees. The final model don't exist. The final model is the working model. Yes. It, it is no... It's a work no... in progress, continuous work yes, in progress. Yes. Yeah, okay. And if you look closely, it's very, very, it's a trap. I mean, it's just like it's, yeah. you put tape, you put yes, color, yes, yes. you put things, but it's very, it's clear. It's very clear. And the scale is big enough that you can fill the space. That's, that's crucial. Okay. Um, any question from students? Please, here. Any question? Okay. I... Um, okay. Do you have any question? No. Okay, sorry. Uh, no, I warmly suggest uh, to read uh, the book uh, presented uh, by Alessandro, The City Behind uh, the Architecture. Uh, Alessandro show, show has before uh, during the presentation. Um, there is any distinction between uh, architecture and nature, uh, I think, uh, in the field office project. Maybe this uh, is a part of a phenomenon that uh, uh, Alessandro called the Zakota. What can we learn from the Zakota phenomenon in, in Europe? What can we import uh, in Europe uh, from uh, this experience? What, what do you think? Okay, very simple. There is like the possibility of living in the some kind of uh, urban rural uh, way of living and then that there are also public space that we believe got uh, quality was in this kind of context for example if, if we go pianura padana i mean you go in the urban land you know what you find you go to the park you go to the street you go to the squares if you go in the agricultural land at best we got agricultural park which means that you got a park in which you can cycle and that's all. You don't have real public space. You don't have really special functions. You need to drive the car, go to there. Actually, what we can import is that there is a chance to redevelop the rural area and to provide quality also there. And I think that's also what you're trying to do with your design studio. Yes. But I believe it's a matter of uh, trust and vision. The lucky, the things that they, have, they were lucky here in Taiwan is that the ground was partially ready. The mix was there. In Italy, we have Veneto, which is similar somehow. We, I was discussing with uh, your team yesterday, but uh, the public space of Veneto is not, that, is not that here. I mean, they got two beautiful old cities and they got two beautiful um, monuments to think about improving that space between the factories and between the fields. But looking to that, there's a possibility of living and a possibility of a different economy. For example, uh, due to this mix, there is a certain also resilience of the agriculture production in Taiwan. Although it is subsidized by the government, uh, the rice production, the food production is still quite strong. And then you can really buy food zero kilometer. I mean, uh, I can go to the market close to my door and uh, I know that the fruits come from a guy that got the orchard uh, like one kilometer away. I mean, that's, that, that's true. It, it is, it happening, it, it's uh, almost informally. No one gives it so much of credit here. It's so natural, but for us, that's not possible anymore, almost. So we have, we are making big theories. We are making big studies in the school. And we are trying to make in big laws to bring it back to, to reality or to think, to imagine when actually, why not to come to see places like this, where this is actually happening. And then maybe we learn from that. And that's not just a matter of planning and having strange ideas, but also the way the people live and the way the space is organized.
You know the thing, Sarah, I want to say like this. Um, it is a matter of uh, being also humble as a European. And when we look outside to see that, well, you know, there's something that we may learn from other places or there's a different way. It is not so different, but it's a little bit different. And that difference may make good benefits. So we need to look outside with these kind of open eyes. I mean, uh, that's maybe the lesson. For sure, well, that's um, one thing you end, the Zakota is not the only answer for the future. It's not the answer maybe, but it's alternative and it's a strong alternative and it has something to say. So maybe even more deeper, what it teaches us is that we need to be open eyes, especially as, uh, as Europeans. Um, I again, uh, I completely agree. Uh, when uh, uh, we we started to fix uh, uh, the lecture for this uh, this studio these years, uh, I have a doubt if uh, a Taiwan experience could be useful for the students because we work in Italy uh, in a specific landscape uh, in the north of Italy. But uh, at the end, uh, also at the end of your presentation, I understood it's completely the same uh, issues and the same uh, challenge in Taiwan, in Europe, in Italy, uh, to um, create a connection in terms of public space, in terms of uh, green and blue infrastructure uh, in uh, Pianura Pradana, in the Po Valley, or in, um, in Taiwan. Um, the last question uh, from my part uh, is, um, uh, as you know, I'm following a thesis in, uh, in Taiwan, and I discovered the problem of soil along the valley, uh, some valley. In, what, what is the, the relationship between the soil and the water in the Sakota in, in, the project, in, uh, in your project? Can you hear me? Yes, is there something you... No, because there is some problem with, the, water and water. with the computer. With soil. Yeah. Uh, yes. There is one thing, uh, there is one specific thing, no? But uh, I would say it, it is not a problem. It is a problem and it is not a problem at the same time. The, uh, the slope of Taiwan, even in the flat areas, it is quite strong. So the soil of Taiwan, it is very... It, it, it is not easy for the soil of Taiwan to keep water. That's one of the biggest problems, to how to preserve, how to keep water inside of the land. The land, as soon as it rains, it just let the water go. But, I mean, they've been through the colonial time of Japan, but also before. Um, people were developing several systems to change the landscape and then to create a system to preserve the water. I will show you another thing which is very important, which is not really Japanese, but it gives you an idea. It's like a space, it's a landscape, which is unique in Taiwan, is unique in the world. So that was Ilan here like a continuous geography so there's not a big uh, trouble what can I do I need to pass up the light oh, I cannot change the light I hear wait a second it's coming Takes a little bit of time to charge. Yes. Sorry, the connection is what it is. You see all these dots? Mm -hmm. Yes. All these are artificial pool 
which have been built two times to serve water. Look, look at the scale of intervention. Wow. Many. So if you go, mm. go around, these are, they have like a little dike dams. It's not modern, eh? it's pretty modern time. You see, there are many, many ponds, but these ponds are completely artificial. They are really product of landscape. This reflect the, the, the soil issue. I mean, it's the way to keep the water. It's a system to control the water. And um, Ilan does not have this because the landscape of Ilan is uh, more flat. And then in this area, it's more hilly. Mm -hmm. So the control of the water, you cannot do like the, the rice field very regular. But in any case, in Ilan, they had the, the Japanese colonialism intervention that divided you see created a very strict structure which is a structure of land and a structure of water i mean every road is also canal plus you see there is a lot of aquaculture you see oh this is is uh, water fields you see this is all aquaculture so to retain the water is the biggest trouble due to topography, to geology, and the kind of soil. But in the same time, the entire island is built, is a landscape, is a real landscape, it's not natural at all. There's no place in Taiwan which is natural as such, especially in the inhabited areas. Then if there is other problem of soil that is not this, you need to tell me which problem of soil you refer to. Okay, it's very interesting. So, uh, thank you so much for the presentation. It was a very, very interesting presentation. And th thank you to accept the invitation. Uh, Sandra, why? <laughs> okay. So, uh, thank you so much again. I hope uh, we, we can uh, see you in person in the next year <laughs> for another opportunity. Um, I just want to add for the students, first of all, thank you very much for being our guest. And I want to ask for the students that, uh, as you probably understood, is so relevant uh, for your, uh, let's say, education, but also for your practice, uh, to see that the same issues uh, are relevant in very different contexts. And different contexts, of course, can enrich uh, the range of your, let's say, and the range and complexity of the issues that are linked to the rural territory, to the urban-rural relationship. And so we are always dealing with the same, let's say, theme and issues, but they look so different when we uh, accept the fact that contexts uh, are different, that uh, uh, relationship between uh, um, human uses and nature are different, are culturally and historically rooted, uh, even if the history is very recent history. Um, so, and we have to keep trace of all of this uh, while we are conceptualizing our uh, design intervention. I, 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 I give an, a, one last point after this one. I, be, I am a foreigner living in Taiwan. I, can, I cannot become Taiwanese. And, um, but I do believe that we need to protect as much as possible this good part of globalization that we had, that we can exchange and talk each other and share. Recent times have been terrible, worse everywhere in the world. That is, is giving us big troubles. And then we are, we are bringing us back to think that we are different. There is no way to share. Actually, it is very crucial, I do believe, that to think that we are all the same, but in the same time, we are all different. But to keep connecting, to keep talking to each other, to see, that's the only way to acknowledge differences, similarities, and share ideas and develop. Without that, I think, we, we may be dead very soon. Yes. Thank you.
Thank you so much. So, uh, we record the presentation. Uh, I will try to um, share the, the record. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Alessandro, remember to send me the um, document for the university. That okay. you asked me. Yeah. It will be done. And please also, if you got this thesis, invite also Yao Ting to help. We'd be very happy, and I think also it's good yeah. for Politecnico di Milano to connect to this university. It's a very good university, one is teaching. Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay, thank you. See you. See you. Bye, bye, bye. 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 bye.